Sewing books form such a valuable part of any home sewist uh, sewing resource center at home. And we all know the old vintage books are the best by far. And so this will be a review, a little look into five of my favorite vintage uh, sewing books from my own collection. So you might get a better idea of what you might like to include and expand your own sewing book library. Welcome back my dear sewing friends. Uh, if you're just new here, welcome. My name is Evelyn Wood and I'm the creator of VintageSewingSchool.com and I've been a lifelong sewer and so I have collected a lot of sewing books and hence the whole thing that I do is a uh, vintage sewing school and vintage fashion house. So vintage sewing books are of course my thing and well, it's been well requested from you. I recently made a video about sewing books to help your uh, learning. Uh, but it was also very highly requested in that video. You were all very curious about my vintage sewing books and wanted a little peek inside. So I thought, let's have a tour. Let's do this. I'm going to show you in uh, my top five vintage sewing books from my collection. Uh, my favorite five, a little review, a look into it and sort of with a view of what I look, look for, what I like about them because obviously most of these are out of print. You're not going to find these yourself, but have a look in a way that, so you can see what is out there and why these old vintage sewing books are the best so that you can start to, uh, you know, curate and collect your own sewing resources because honestly, these are the best sewing resources that you could find. Before I get into these books, what do I look for in vintage sewing books uh, altogether? So first of all, my picks are usually, when anyone asks me this question, I say uh, pre-60s is usually the pick. Before then, sewing was basically the way that I look at sewing and my whole philosophy of sewing, the way I teach it in vintage sewing school, and that is what we do here, is that it's about the skills you need, not just projects. And so pre-60s, uh, sewing is really about the skills. And so what do I mean by that? So when you look at the chapters, and this is how you, you can know, is when you look at the chapters of the books, you'll find them sectioned off into things like seams, like stitching seams, seam finishes, and then finishing techniques, sleeves, cuffs, fabrics, all of these different types of like subject matters, because that's the kind of book that you pull to when you're midway through a project you go to that section of the book that you're stuck in and you can find it like an index. I, you know, built Vintage Sewing School basically around that whole premise as well. And that's, that's how I think that's what we want when we're sewing. We don't just want to go through and copy project, project, projects. We want to do our own projects and learn how to best use these skills in different situations that we might have. And that's what these books focus on. That's the way that they like it. Hence, vintage sewing. That's what we do here. Not vintage style. It's about the vintage sewing. And so these books are exactly that. And then, of course, uh, after the chapters, look at the pictures. Do they make sense to you? Do they have pictures that you can understand? Now, of course, when you're first learning, that anything on pattern drafting and, and all that sort of thing will not make sense to you because those sewing, sewing hieroglyphs, as I like to call them, will come in time. But they're the main things that I look for in a sewing book. Let's start though, I'm going in order from the newest to the oldest down the bottom. And the first book is Successful Dressmaking uh, by uh, Aline and Marietta Resesque. Uh, now, all of these will be linked down below, though I don't think you'll be able to find them anymore. This one is from about the mid to late 50s. And I actually believe that this one was a a uh, textbook that was used in schools. I found many copies of this over the years uh, and just the way it's set out, it looks very logical like a school book and hence I found so many, that's why I think it is. It's a beautiful book. Uh, the illustrations are of course absolutely delightful. Um, all of the equipment that you need, you can see when I look at the uh, chapters, for example, uh, they've broken it down into pattern making, the different areas there, sewing processes, uh, all fastenings, collars, hems, making the garment, sewing it together. So it's very logical and it all makes uh, quite a lot of sense. And so it just goes into beautiful uh, talks about your figure, your sleeve measurements, getting bodices as you go down chapters, uh, obviously then how to sew, pattern adjustments for different fit. It's a very well-rounded kind of book and it just has everything from um, sewing for the home 
obviously it goes into all of these older books usually always include uh, nightwear, children's wear and always sections on mending and uh, renovations. That means that's the oh, that's the garment renovations that I like to say for upcycling, refashions, all of that. There's always chapters on that, and this book is no exception. It is beautiful. It has a bit of everything, and if you like 1950s style of fashion, you can even copy different um, sections to give you different styles of collars, etc. That are all obviously in keeping with the style at the time. Lots of pictures of illustrations on how to. Um, set in sleeves, etc. How to make some beautiful cuffs and plackets. It's very detailed. And again, it focuses on the uh, skills, the skills that you need. Smocking, beads and sequins, the shirt pants. All these different things are different skills and it is just a wonderful, wonderful little book. As I said, always sections on mending, which is really nice. You do not see this in modern books anymore. And the index in the, book, the back really makes it useful. And again, I just love these illustrations. If you are in Australia, I bet you are lucky enough. If you look hard enough, you'll probably find one of these other parts of the world. This particular book, I don't think that you'll find this one, but I'm sure you'll find something similar. My next book is from 1954 and it is Thrift with a Needle. This is one of my favorites. A long time watchers of this channel will have probably seen this book before appear in different uh, refashion videos and I've talked about this one before. It is a little gem, an absolute gem. It's an entire book, the complete book of mending. I mean, that says it all, right? If I was going to make a title of a book, this would be it. So this entire book is just that, about mending, about refashioning, um, uh, the art of garment, et renovations as I like to say. So you have a look at the contents, why mend, uh, simple alterations, darning, patches, mending lingerie, mending it's just all sectioned off beautifully. There it goes through step by step in all these different areas, how to uh, repair knitted garments, how to darn and how to patch. Actually, I followed a darning instruction from this book in this video. I'll link that down below as well if you're really interested in learning from this book as well. So it's just beautiful, a lot of text, but just enough illustrations that I think uh, shows what is explaining the through here. So, you know, repairing lace, repairing, it's just beautiful, L-shaped tears, straight tears. It's just wonderful. Machine darning, hand darning. It goes into so much detail. It is just under the arms, you know, elbows, all the common type problems. It's all set out in a way that's really, really fantastic. And I love it because it's made in a time when we actually did mend our clothes. So it's really, really useful and valuable information as one of my absolute treasures is this one. Next is the pictorial guide to modern home dressmaking. This is actually part of a series. There is uh, the same one to home needlecraft and there is a knitting one that I also have that is in storage as well. This is a great all rounder, sort of like a sewing 101 uh, book. Um, from, I forget when this one is actually, I did look it up. I think it is uh, late thirties, early forties. Uh, it's hard to tell often they reprint them, but use the same imagery from earlier times. So it can be hard to tell sometimes. But if you have a look at the contents, it's all laid out into all the sections that you want to see. Again, garment renovations. Uh, and it just goes through really, really detailed, lots of great pictures. I mean, the illustrations are just wonderful. It starts at the start, all the equipment that you need, different sewing stitches, doing seam finishes, how to lay out your fabric on grain, how to you know mark your fabric, tailor's tacks, everything like this. Then on to actually the sewing machine and about using your sewing machine. And then it goes into details on even how to use different types of feet. When you look at the machine that it's actually sewing this on, you can tell this is one of the old fashioned singers. I love it. it goes step by step in different finishing uh, procedures like doing sleeves, how to achieve the different looks. And of course, this is a la, you know, late thirties, early forties. I'd say this sleeve is early forties. Um, sleeve heads, how to get this actual shape of these ones. So if you're interested in actual vintage style as well, these books are just invaluable. I just love this one. Step-by-step -step hand buttonholes, for example, treatments of openings and fastenings. It's just all of the beautiful uh, finishing techniques, even, um, you know, dress decoration and millinery, lace flowers, how to do, you know, insertion lace. It just goes detailed into all the types of trimmings of the time. 
It is just beautiful. It's such a very detailed, logical. Again, it has your index at the back to really find what you're looking for as you need it. And it's just a wonderful all rounder and really great insight into using finishes of the time. If you want your garments to kind of look like a vintage garment as well on the inside and out, basically it's couture sewing techniques, but just from the old days. This one is a treasure. This next one is probably my favorite cover of all time. This is the better dressmaker from the 1930s and is a step-by-step -step dressmaking guide for beginners and professionals. This one was published in Australia, so I'm not sure if uh, you'll find this anywhere else in the world. And again, it goes, uh, your chapters are really logical. Seams, hems, facings, pipings, cordings, step-by-step, uh, -step, and it really takes you through both sewing uh, 101 type subjects, your core sewing things, how to lay out fabric, etc. to more detailed finishings. Again, when you're midway through a project, you can come and look up the section that you need and go find the, the thing that you need to do. Hem a particular type of uh, dress doing dressmaking stitches, how to tie a knot, how to make the knot, all the different types of seams that you can do, the overslot seam, the false shot seam. I've never even heard of these types of seams. The slayed shot seam. I mean, of course, they're just names and names change over time, but there are so many different types of ways to do different stitches, different hems, different finishings. It lays it all out here. Beautiful illustrations. Again, there are chapters on uh, ornamental work, like these uh, stem stitches through the here. You've also got how how to do the most beautiful hooks and eyes that you've ever sewn, how to do fastenings and buttons, everything is in here. And even some tailoring in the back. And of course there are lessons on dining and renovations as well because all the best books have those. It is just delightful. The illustrations are gorgeous. I love it. And just like any uh, well-rounded vintage books like this, uh, they, they always have categories of doing menswear, of doing children's wear, and usually nightwear in the back as well as those sections on mending and renovations. So that's how you know it's kind of like a vintage, well-rounded, all-compassing kind of sewing book of any kind of length. An absolute treat. The last one here is my oldest sewing book and it is called The Dressmaker from the Buttrick Publishing Company and this is from I think 1916. It's the second edition. Now this one was a real treasure. I found this at a book fair. Actually I think I found most of these at a book fair. As soon as I saw this one when they show you how to do regular straight stitches and they're showing you how to do it by hand you know it's really old. So this one is just an absolute delight because everything is hand done. There's not a machine in this. Uh, it is all how to do everything by hand, how to do all your um, stitches, how to do your seam finishes, um, all by hand. The illustrations are beautiful. They are just oh so lovely. Uh, when you look at all the buttonholes and a lot of lace application, again, all by hand. Of course, the mandatory lessons on darning and mending. His darning is a lot finer stitches than I can probably get. I'm not surprised though. The thing is, the actual sewing techniques are exactly the same. We might just use different equipment. We might use our machine for different things, but basically patching something is exactly the same as it was in 1916 as it is now. So these sewing resources are still relevant. It's just maybe a different method, um, different, you know, as I said, machinery that we might use. Things like in this one, the plackets, for example, is just beautiful and they are executed so, so well. I mean, obviously this is a time when uh, skill and detail, attention to detail is absolute paramount rather than just getting something done quickly. Hence why it's, it's all done by hand still. And uh, if you're going to do it by hand, you do a good job and you take your time to do a really nice job. Infants clothes we see through here, sailor and naval suits, a whole set Section. That is fun. How to do all those little ties. Look at this. I love it. Even the dress forms give away the uh, the age and date this. I love these uh, vintage sewing books and you look through the different decades of time and you see the pattern shapes and the silhouettes change and it's really 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 interesting at least to me. You can see these skirt shapes are very different than the ones from some of my other books from the 1940s for example and it really demonstrates how the silhouette changes and how important the little tweaks in the silhouette uh, make to the end look of your garment and what the silhouette it will give you. And all of, you can see the emphasis on this book in lace, in lace insertion, and all of these fine techniques of pin tucks, because that was the fashion at the time. So if you're ever trying to get a different look, a different feel than modern clothes, I would say go back and definitely resource 
um, these older sewing books like this one. I like the ones that I have here for reference on different styles. But this is my oldest one. I do have one other really cutie that I love as a little bonus extra. This is Easy Dressmaking Made Easy by um, Laura L. Bolt by the McCall's Company from the 1920s. It's a nice little, little book, but it is quite detailed and gives all the, you can see the illustrations and the looks from the 1920s. The fit is very different than it is from this book as it is from these books. Um, but the actual techniques, the execution of everything is the same. Again, they're showing you how to do stitches by hand, all of your seams, I should say, not just finishings, buttonholes by hand, everything by hand. Skirts and hems, Plackets. It's a beautiful little book. Self trimmings. I mean, look at this. If I was going to do the scalloped hem and how to do this, I would do it exactly like this. So I know you won't be able to find many of these books yourself, of course, but I do have what's on my wish list. Well, my wish list, maybe some of these are on yours. My wish list is actually the set of uh, home books from Mary Brooks Prickins uh, from the 1920s. They're the uh, home, um, like you mail order in and you can do home courses at home from the Women's Homes Institute of Science. Did I even say that right? Um, is on my wish list. They, um, there's like sets of all of the different um, genres. I think, don't know how many in total. I can't recall at the top of my mind. If anyone sees any, uh, you know, laying around on eBay, Etsy, do let me know because they are one that I want to add to my own personal collection. I have the, uh, you know, uh, copies of course, but I would love to get my hands on an actual real physical copy for my collection. So let me know if you see any of those. But as you can see, there are so many wonderful vintage sewing books around and it really depends on what kind of sewing you like, but generally all of them are valuable. If you're interested in learning the skills of sewing, learning uh, finer finishing techniques, how to hand finish a lot of things really beautifully. It's basically couture sewing techniques. It's just that we call it couture now because all we do is machine. It's just doing it by hand and doing it bit by nicely, which is all they did back then in these books. So you can really, really learn a lot. And I hope it gives you a bit of an insight into some of them and we'll get you on the lookout, but don't buy all the vintage books that I want to buy. Hopefully, I'm sure there's enough for all of us to go around. Let me know what is your favorite vintage book of mine here that you want to get, or what ones should I add to my collection? I would love to hear those down in the comments down below because I'm always looking to expand my collection, of course, because so much knowledge here to have on hand. I look forward to reading your comments. Remember to read them as well. I've linked uh, some things down below that I think that we'll find really, really helpful as well. So until next time, my sewing friends, happy sewing. Bye.